do you have any idea who you're meeting with today? Are you getting any premonitions at all? Well, I have been feeling like I was going to connect to a man who passed away of a heart-related issue. You referenced a valve problem. Do you actually feel that yourself physically? Although he's explained to me his abilities, I have a difficult time understanding how Tyler does what he does. So I actually get a chest pain, and that indicates to me that that has something to do with the chest, obviously. And then to specifically see a valve problem, that's visual, that comes through clairvoyantly. So I actually see a valve in the heart. And then really? I see, I'll see a, a symbol for me that indicates that there's an issue. Oh my gosh. So that's how it works. Tyler's able to tell people information about medical issues. He takes on the other person's physical pain. So I think it definitely takes its toll on him. And I do worry about him. All right. This is it. This is it. Awesome. All right. Love you. See you, Mama. Love Bye. you. Bye. Hello. Hi, honey. Hi. How are you? Oh, great to meet you. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited to oh, meet you. Me too. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Come oh. on in. I'm Monica Potter. I was on the show Parenthood for six seasons. I've also done movies like Con Air, Along Came a Spider, Head Over Heels, and my favorite, Patch Adams. I have you set up over here. All right. So when the door opened, I actually didn't initially recognize Monica. She was beautiful and had the sweetest, most sincere energy of any client I honestly think I've ever had. I heard your mom's name is Teresa. Yes. So I have my St. Teresa out. Oh, how fun. I put that out last night. Oh, wow. Yeah. I am nervous. I don't know why. My hands are sweating. Um, I'm a pretty spiritual person, but you know, I don't really see psychics ever, but I'm just open. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming out. It. Yeah. So the general idea of what I do, what I do, is I actually work as a medium and as a clairvoyant. So I see information. And my goal in a reading is basically just to give you whatever you're looking for um, without knowing anything about you. Mm -hmm. So that's kind that of how it works. That sounds good. And so um, I see that you have some objects. I do. Yeah, this is great. Well, usually I work through psychometry where I actually kind of read the object. And that's how that works. Okay. So would you mind if I hold on to one? You can. But you never had a fishing lure, so there's one. Great. And then I have, um... Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Great. So, all right, I'm going to try to bring through what I can bring through. Um, the way that I kind of work is I just right. scribble. I have a pen and a paper here, and I just kind of scribble. It's just how I get info. But I'm just going to kind of get quiet for a moment, and we'll see what pops in. Okay. A lot going on mentally here. Let's see. Join the club. <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure out where I'm going first. There's a lot of energy popping in. So as I'm connecting, I'm getting all these really random pieces of information that I have to make fit. It's almost like a puzzle, and I have no idea where the pieces fit. Okay. I don't know why these details are coming through. It's the funniest thing. It's just because you're so open and picking up on tons of details. Well, two things. So there's reference to a couple of things. Mm -hmm. One, someone had a very bad experience with a dog. Someone was, might have been traumatized by dogs because it's like a dog attack or a dog thing where I feel like I'm terrified of dogs. Bridget. That's my sister. Okay, so we have that one. So weirdly, um, do you know if anyone has any military connections within family? My dad was in the Coast Guard. Okay, that would fit for me. So a couple different things are popping in. Oh, weird. Now, do you know who died of the heart-related issue? It would have been specifically, a, potentially like a valve-related problem. The way that this person's acknowledging is, is basically saying that, like, I know I have this problem and then I feel like I pass of it. I don't feel like my electrical activity in my heart is functioning to the fullest extent. It almost looks like I'm having heart palpitations. Do you know where that would fit? Because I was even coming through on the way here. That's my dad. I'm sorry. The thing is, is he's acknowledging he was stubborn. <laughs> And he's also talking about the fact that he was afraid. He's expressing an apology for his passing. It's not his fault that he died, but he's saying multiple people were very proactive in being like, you really should see a doctor, you should get a checkup, you know, go get this done. You we know, all went, all four of us, with my mother and separately, and told his doctor, his doctor said he's a walking time bomb. Right. OK. He knew he had the problem. Right. And he wouldn't get it fixed and he wouldn't get the angioplasty because he was afraid right. and he was stubborn. Yeah. So you nailed it. And, you know, he was my best friend. Yeah. I lost my dad suddenly of a massive heart attack and I was away filming. He just 
believed in me when things were really tough, so he always encouraged me to follow my dreams and my passion. And I still don't think that I have fully digested that he's gone. He's tried to come through already, and that there, he's talking about an incident in which there was something to do with the smell. Now, this is kind of a weird thing. I don't know what this is, but he's referencing to being in a room, I can see it, and it's just coming through really, really, really strongly, and I feel like I'm in this room, and I just I, am smelling it. No, yeah. Does that make any sense? It makes total sense. What happened? After he died, I took three flights to get home and went straight upstairs and went to the medicine cabinet and opened up his cologne. And I put it all over me. And then I have a home store and we made a candle and um, a spray named after him called Paul. Wow. Oh. And, yeah. When he's coming through, the really overwhelming theme for him is that in his passing, he felt like he was devoted to his work, even to his own detriment. Mm -hmm. And even before he'd finish something, he'd yes. be thinking, of, well, what about the next That's one That's exactly it. But he's acknowledging that you're doing the same things that he did in his life. And, Absolutely. And, and, you know, just from, from a perspective of health, really keep in mind that your quality of sleep, even when you're sleeping, is suffering. It's horrible. I don't sleep. Yeah. Because my brain doesn't shut off. Sure. Mm -hmm. Much like my father did. And right. he was an inventor. Sure. And so it sort of come full circle. I sort of have taken the path that he took and create things the way he did. But I just, I just need to slow down. Right. To slow down to enjoy life because it's been a tough year you know, trying to navigate this on my own. And some days I'll just wake up and cry because it's overwhelming. I feel that there's a heavy weight on me to keep this going. Sure. Um, and I'm just, I just want to know if it's going to be okay. Um, let me see what he wants to say. Father figure's coming through really strongly, and as he's connecting, he's so interesting, I just love him. So as he's coming through, there is a reference to the March of Dimes. I don't know if there's something literally connected to the March of Dimes or what the thing is there. Stop. <laughs> what does that mean? Dimes? Uh-huh. He sends me dimes. And he always supported the March of Dimes. Right. But I will find a dime right. a lot by itself once a week. And I know it's from him. Right. Interesting. I have a huge bag of dimes wow. that I've collected and found. Right. Wow. I love that. But he, there's like a reference to it as that being one of the ways that he's came through. And that, I think, is just validation that you're on the complete right track. If, if there's anything you can take with you, take that with you, because that's huge. That makes me feel good. Oh, yeah. The March of Dimes thing was very strange, in a good way. Because sometimes in life, you just sort of grasp at straws and, you know, you don't know what you're doing or what you're supposed to be doing. And it just validated to me that we're on the right path and he is guiding us. You know, he is showing that he's with us and taking care of us, even on days that I want to quit. So it feels good to know that. It really feels good to know that. With where you're at, it's about helping people. Mm -hmm. And through you, he'll help people vicariously in that way, through the influence he made. That's amazing. I've always said that, you know, I feel like my dad is doing more, yeah. you know, as he's passed than he could while he was here. He's so proud of you for continuing his legacy, and that's a lot of pressure on a person, but he doesn't want you to have that pressure. And that's really big, and that's huge. One of the big messages that Monica's dad came through was basically just to slow down, that there wasn't a pressure to have to continue on his legacy, and that she does it every day anyway, just by being herself and sharing the love that he gave to her. So do you do house readings? Absolutely, yeah. I actually like walking through a space and just kind of feeling the energy of it and yeah. telling people where things have kind of stagnated and where things are flowing, yeah. I would love to do that. Okay. I bought back the house that we grew up in right. and we're rehabbing it. When you go into that house, mm -hmm. you feel him, you know he's there. While we're going through this journey, my sisters and I and my mom, I want to know that my dad is sort of guiding us because there's such a big, strong energy in that house. So I wanted to fly you to Ohio so you could walk through the house when it's empty and have my sisters there with, with my mother as well. That would be incredible. I would okay. love to. So Monica invited me to go to Cleveland, which is something I really wasn't expecting. It's a whole other level of connection to a client that I've never even explored before. So I'm excited to do it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so oh much. Gosh, you, you are, are an so angel. Lovely. You, are you so really sweet. are.
your gift is, is unlike anything else. You offer guidance, but you also are very positive and loving and caring. And when did you start to notice your gift? Uh, well, I was 10 and my grandmother was ill with cancer. I woke up one night, just knew she was gonna pass and she did. I told my mom and we got the call moments later. And that was my first instance. And then the more I opened up, the more I found messages would come through. And they were always helpful. They would always be reassuring to people and comforting. And the messages always met them when they were meant to. That's a great thing to have. It's Thank a great you. gift. Thank you. Monica was so sweet and so nurturing. And to get that energy into her reading really made my job so much easier. She was open to the information I had, but even on a deeper level, had a sincere concern for me. And I could feel that. So to have that mutual connection was awesome. And I wish every reading were that way. Thank yeah, you, that sweetheart. To you. Thank you. Going into this reading, I was uneasy, I was nervous, and the second he started talking, I knew that yes. my dad was here. And I felt immediately like there was a burden lifted off my shoulders and it just felt more free and allowed to let go. My dad has my back, and that's a pretty amazing thing. Where's your mama? Can I say hi to her? Oh, you totally can. OK. <laughs> hi, hi mom. mom. This is Monica. Hi, how are you? Oh my gosh, hi. Hi. Oh, so nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. <laughs> oh, you are so lovely. Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. Oh, you're so beautiful. And you know, I just pulled out my St. Teresa statue last night, and I didn't even know you were coming. <laughs> I followed you for years. Oh, oh my really? gosh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, thanks. I don't even believe I'm talking oh, to you. Oh, right you're so cute. <laughs> so I have this for you guys to enjoy. Oh, it's from my, my gosh, store. Oh my so nice of you. My cell phone's on there. If you oh, need anything, thank you. you were yeah, so sweet. This is so neat. Yeah, and thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Have one. OK, oh, you bless you. Sure. Thank you again. I love you guys. Right. You guys thank you. Thank bless you. Bless your heart. Yeah. You too. Have a good day. Bye, Bye. honey. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is unbelievable. I want to hang out with them all the time. Who do I get to meet next? I don't know. We'll see. Oh my god, Tyler. <laughs> what if I just started stalking them? Like, what about Bob? Like, I just showed up their house. Like, hey, guys, or the cable guy. 